Hello, in this snip, we are going to talk about using Ipswich's Move It Automation 2018 product and its new REST APIs that it's got. And we're going to use those REST APIs. You can do a lot of different things, but in the SNP, we're going to use those to show you how you can initiate programmatically in a PowerShell script to transfer files from one source to a destination. So before we do that, there's a few prereqs that we're going to need to, uh, to talk about. Obviously, you need Move It Transfer 2018, and you need permissions to do that in Move It Transfer. Obviously, I'm using the, uh, the admin account. There are a few things that I've already done. I've already added files manually in the source folder into transfer, and you need just to make sure that that's also um, accessible. To explain this, the scenario is we have a file called wallpaper.png, and it's already um, uploaded into the, uh, the script like I showed you. So here in Move It uh, Transfer, in our source folder here, we have a file called wallpaper.png. So I've already done that ahead of time. So let me make sure, here's the destination folder that we're going to be using, and uh, oops, I've already had that here, there for my testing, so I'll go ahead and just delete that via the UI here. All right, so now, now that we have that ready to go, and let's see how we can transfer that to the destination folder. The references here, this is a really good reference um, link if you want to get more information about copying files with the API. This gets pretty code heavy, um, but um, I will show you uh, here at the bottom that uh, a really shortcut on how to uh, to get this done quickly. All right, so first off, the first thing we need to do, we need to craft the endpoint URI. So in a REST API, everything has an endpoint, and you need to have the URI to point your, your script to your code. So on the first few lines here, I'm just defining some variables. The local host is, is going to be locally on the, the Move It Transfer server itself, and I'm specifying the move it um, transfer username and password, and then the grant type. That just means um, normally you can authenticate with, to REST API with a password or with a token. I'm just going to be using a username and password here. And then on line 28, that's where I define the endpoint URL. So it is going to be localhost slash API slash v1 slash token. That actually gets the uh, endpoint URI for, to grab the token. We have to grab a token first, which then once we have the token, we can use that to authenticate. And I'll show you how to do that. And then on line 29 there, we have the auth HTTP body, which is essentially the um, HTTP query, the Git, where we're going to be sending a Git verb to the, uh, the REST API. And that just tells it uh, the grant type, the username and password, it provides all that information. Okay, then on line 31 here, then here's where we actually are going to send the... Um, the HTTP post request to move it. So first off in 32, that is the PowerShell specific thing. If you're using something like Python or something else, you may not have to do this, but um, that server certificate validation callback uh, method that we're calling there, that to, um, so we don't get prompted for a self-signed certificate. So we have a self-signed certificate on the move it transfer server. Next up is where we actually run invoke rest method. We pass in the URI. We're going to say, we do want to send a post method and then we send the, the body along with that. And that actually grabs the token. So once we have the token, then we can use that for all subsequent calls to it so that it knows uh, who we are. So we don't have to keep passing the username and password all the time. All right, so I will go ahead and run this. And then hopefully, yep, we didn't get an error message, which is good. And now we have a big, long gobbledygook encrypted uh, token that we can use to authenticate ourselves to the uh, Move It Transfer server. All right, next up, we need to, uh, to prep the headers here. And what I'm doing here is I'm just essentially creating a, um, a headers value that I'm going to pass later. The, uh, I'm going to use the authorization key here and pass it the value of the bearer token. That's how invoke rest method actually can then pass that information to the move it transfer server. Once we have the token and that's all that is done, then we need to find a file ID, move it transfer, depends on IDs quite a bit. Um, so the first stuff, we need to find the file ID of that wallpaper.png file that I showed you before. So to do that, we need to query the files API, which we do that by defining the import URL. Notice that it's instead of as token, it's files now. And then on line 43 here, that's where we actually can query that out and pull that individual file out. 
And now you can see that we have ID, name, path, we have all kinds of information about it. So now that we have the file object uh, created, now we need to find the destination folder ID. And to do that, same kind of concept here, we use the import URL. This time it's folders instead of files. And I'm doing the same approach. I'm just looking for the folder name of destination folder. And when I do that, notice that now that I have a folder object created, I have the ID, parent ID, all that good information there. All right, next up, now we can actually do the, the copy. So the copy, how I'm doing this is I'm creating a hash table in 52 called folder. And it has a destination folder ID key in it and using the, the move it transfer folder ID inside of that. And then on 55 is where I'm converting that to JSON. I'm doing that because on line 57 there, you see the, the body parameter, you have to have JSON. And, or you can just uh, create JSON on the fly if you want. But I found that in PowerShell, I could just create a hash table pass it to convert to JSON on 55 here, and then it just creates that JSON for me. So that the copy method on 56 here and the URI that we're going to be using, it requires that JSON. So I will go ahead and run this, and everything is pretty much the same, um, but instead of um, URI, we're passing the same URI there, the body like we just talked about, and the content type is necessary. We have to specify application slash JSON because if we don't, uh, it's going to be an undefined MIME type, and it's just not going to know what kind of uh, format the, the call is supposed to be in. So now we run this. Notice it's pretty quick. It's a, a it's only a 7 meg file, and it's all locally. But what we did was we actually just copied the file. It was just that easy. Everything is pretty quick once you get all the code built. Building out all the code is the hard part. But I've done all that for you, and if you're doing this with PowerShell, I'm going to show you a really easy way to do that, um, to sum this all up. But just to make sure that this thing is in the destination folder now, ta-da, voila, it is. All right, so that actually does the transfer. Um, let's delete this out, and I'll show you how we're, we can sum all this up together. So you don't have to worry about all that code if you don't want to. So I've created a PowerShell function here called copy move it transfer file. And inside of that, it's essentially just combining all that code that we just built together. I have a bunch of uh, parameters, the source file, the destination folder, that to, you don't even have to mess with uh, IDs or anything like that. You just specify source file, destination folder, username, password, and then you don't even have to specify the server name. Uh, you can set a default value like I'm doing here. And then the rest of this is essentially doing exactly the same thing. Um, creating, getting that uh, authentication token, prepping the headers, finding the file ID, making sure the destination folder is there and getting the folder ID and then doing the file copy. Um, for the most part, it's exactly the same thing. But notice that I've combined it all into one, um, one function. I don't have to execute these one line by line. So in the real world, you're probably going to do this a lot of times. So it's a good idea to create a tool um, to do this. So let me bring this in. So now I have copy, move it, transfer file. And here I'm going to pass some parameters uh, via uh, PowerShell splatting. The source file path, as just as we saw, that was home, text snip, source folder, wallpaper. I'm going to transfer it to destination folder, and then there's the username and password that I'm going to use. So I can just copy and bring all that in. And notice that we did the exact same thing. I didn't have to go down through each of those line by line. The, the copy, move it, transfer file function does all that stuff for us. And let's say to prove that it's there, I'll go ahead and run it again. And now you can say that a file name with a wallpaper.png already exists in the folder. So it did, um, it did transfer. So that's a great thing about PowerShell. You can learn, it's important to learn how the, all the code works. Um, but uh, as soon as you learn all that, you can wrap that all up in a single function. And between all of the code that we had over here, so notice that we had all the way from 22 all the way down to, what, 57, 37 lines of code, we were able to get that, we were able to do all that same functionality with, with just, uh, what is that, 126 to 132, with uh, just six lines of code. So it's a really great thing about PowerShell. So that has been how to transfer files uh, with the REST API using IPSwitch's Move It Transfer 2018.